Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are in Coral Island and I'm going to be giving you 20 of my very own useful tips and tricks that I think you should always do at the start of a brand new Coral Island adventure. These tips are great for new players and beginners to give you the perfect head start which will also help you to avoid mistakes and setbacks so you can have a smooth and enjoyable experience. And I tend to always do these 20 things every time I play. So in no particular order let's get started straight away with tip number one and this is something that I recommend to do right away and that's dive into the game settings and from here you want to turn on auto run this will be set to disabled by default which some people might not even realize but setting this to enabled will make your character run constantly without having to hold or press shift key this will not drain any stamina and it means you'll get around this huge map much more quickly and even at running speed, this still isn't super fast, but there are other ways to increase speed, which we'll get onto later. The second tip, and this is also involving the settings, and this one is super interesting, and a new feature that I've yet to see in other games, and this is changing the actual game speed. So by default, this is set to 100%, which is the standard casual time that you would expect from a farm RPG, but if you are finding the days to go by super fast and you aren't finding enough time in the day to get things done, then bring the percentage down and make the days longer. You can use the slider and go all the way down to 50% if you wish, but you may find this to be too long, so just explore different times until one suits your playstyle. I find 80% is a sweet spot for me. But another cool feature, if you are playing on default 100% and you are struggling to get back to your farm before 1am, you can put the game speed down to 50% to give you that little extra time to make sure you don't pass out this is super handy if you are up in the mines or you're foraging quite far away and you've got lost track of time just move it down to 50 percent to give you extra time to get back home tip number three when you first get started you will notice straight away that you won't have much space in your inventory and you will fill this out super fast this can get rather frustrating because so far in coral island you cannot drop items on the ground to make space for something else the only thing you can do with a full backpack is trash an item to make space for another so one handy tip that i find useful before crafting chests is to use the shipping bin as a little portable storage place. This is great to dump off some items to manage your storage quickly as the shipping bin allows you to access it anytime and take out items that you've put in there. This is great to use until you can craft enough chests around the farm. It basically acts as one big storage chest. The only difference is at the end of the day, if there's anything left inside, this will be sold. So if you are to use this tip, make sure to take any of the items out that you wish to keep before going to sleep. Let's move on to tip number four. Scythe those weeds around the farm and around town. Just like we are familiar in Stardew Valley, scything down weeds will give you a chance to find wild seeds or mixed seeds. These are seeds based around the season that you are in and will give you a random crop when planted. This is a great way to get started for making money early on as you don't need to spend money on them. This is basically free profit. The only negative thing about this tip though in Coral Island is using the scythe actually drains stamina. So you do have to be careful with how much you are doing. So make sure you take some snacks with you if you wish to do this all day and try and hunt for lots of wild seeds. Tip number five, on the topic of scything weeds, make sure to always carry your scythe with you when exploring and foraging. There will be lots of weeds around town in Coral Island and you cannot walk through them. So they will block your path and you can get blocked and trapped if you do not have the scythe on you. But not only is having the scythe on you good for clearing paths, it's also super handy to remove trash around the town and on the beaches. For the same reason as weeds, you cannot walk through trash, so they do act as a barrier. But also trash is a very important resource, especially at the start. So you wanna gather as much of this as possible. And there's also chances to find some good loot in trash. Things such as coffers, which basically chests that contain lots of artifacts and good things that the blacksmith can open. Right, we're on tip number six, and this also carries on from the previous two, 
but on your farm, make sure to clear around the edges so you can easily walk around your farm without getting stuck. The farm in Coral Island is huge and very messy. The center of it is going to be super dense and almost inaccessible. I have noticed walking around the edge is so much more easier and less stressful. The chaotic mess will be super overwhelming to start with, but spending a few minutes per day clearing up the weeds, chopping down the trees, this will easily fix the problem and you'll soon get on top of it. The most important thing is to clear all of the exits on your farm so you can easily get to and from your house, especially when it is late and you're in a rush. Tip number seven. I like these tips to follow on from each other. So whilst you are clearing up your farm, make sure to gather and save all of the tree seeds and the sap from the trees. Using one of any seed and sap will let you craft candied tree seeds and these are great to use as snacks, which will replenish your energy early on in Coral Island. Stamina is a huge problem at the beginning, and you will be using a lot of this, especially when you spend time clearing up the farm. So eating these little sweet treats will help you in control of your energy, allowing you to spend longer doing chores around the farm. I find that the best ways to gather seeds is by shaking or kicking trees, and also you'll find them on the floor, which you will need your ax to gather them. And of course, felling a tree will also drop you seeds and the sap which is needed. But that does require more stamina. Let's move on to number eight. If you are struggling with precision when using tools and you are mishitting, making errors and wasting lots of energy by doing this, then you can do this simple tip. Holding control on the keyboard whilst using a tool will reposition your character and make them face straight and steady, making you use your tools correctly with lots more precision. You can also go into the settings to have a tool marker show so you can see what you are hitting. This will stop you from making mistakes and draining much needed energy. Moving on to number nine. This one is very simple, but is very important for most farm RPGs and that is to craft the damn scarecrow as soon as possible too. You can only do this when you are farming level one and of course those damn crows make a return in Coral Island and they will eat your seeds and crops if you do not have a scarecrow. And this can be devastating in the early stages because you will lose your hard earned money and they can be relentless if not managed correctly. The first scarecrow that you craft is very easy, you just need wood and trash. The radius on this will not be very big. So another tip with scarecrows is if you go up to Ben's caravan on the weekends he will sell lots of rare items but he does sell an upgraded version of the scarecrow very affordable and obviously a better radius than the one you can craft so that is entirely up to you but we are halfway through now so let's go to tip number 10 just like Stardew Valley, there is other ways to sell your items in the game. The most common way, of course, is putting things in the shipping bin, and then when you sleep at the end of the day, you will get a screen pop-up telling you how much everything has sold for. But if you are in need for quick cash, and you don't have time to wait until the end of the day, you can sell lots of your goods in all of the different shops. So Sam's General Store, you can sell things like crops, you know, your forage goods, or your general items. If you go down to the beach shack, you can sell fish, bugs, shells, anything fishing or bug related. This is very useful for, like I said, a quick instant cash, but also to clear out your inventory. If you've got a bag full and you don't want to head all the way back to the farm, just sell things into the shops. You will get the exact same price for doing any of those options, so it doesn't really matter. Tip number 11, and whilst we're talking about shops, make sure you save up and upgrade your backpack as soon as possible. Now the best thing is the first upgrade only costs 500 gold. Now this will only add five slots, giving you a total of 20, because you do start with 15 in Coral Island. So having those extra five for 500 gold is definitely worth it and it's gonna help massively at the start of the game. It's still not going to be a huge help but make sure you do craft a lot of chests around your farm also to manage storage. Doing this right away is going to give you a much more smoother beginning. Tip number 12. Repair your house as soon as possible. This is one of the first quests you do in Coral Island. And repairing the house is very, very easy. You just need to get the resources. It's not going to cost any money. But doing this will unlock the TV, which allows you to actually check the weather forecast. In Coral Island, you do not start with the TV. You do have to repair it first because the house is a little bit shabby and worn down. And you're going to want that TV right away. Because seeing the weather means you can plan ahead with tool upgrades. If you want to go fishing, whatever you want to do with your days, you need to know if it's going to be raining or not. 
Tip number 13. In Coral Island, when you level up your skills, you will get skill points. Don't forget to level them up by spending the points. When I first played this, I was just playing casually, you know, fishing, foraging, mining, etc. And I didn't even realize I had lots of skill points to spend. There's no like proper indication of you getting skill points. It's easily lost if you're already doing something else in the game. So every now and then go into your skills and spend your points. These are going to really, really help you at the start. You can get things such as more speed you can get more forage items more crops bug catching and fishing is going to be so much easier just just don't forget all right that's the mistake i made number 14 make sure you save one of every item in the game this can be bugs, fish, artifacts, gems, etc. Because there is a museum in Coral Island and you're going to have to fill this up. You're going to have to donate everything. Like I said, there is an aquarium, there is a place for your bugs. And once you donate your first 50, you will be able to upgrade the museum, which is awesome. And I recommend just to save in one of everything to make it a lot easier to donate. But also saving your crops and forage items. You will need a lot of items for the Harvest Goddess. This acts very similar to the community center in Stardew Valley. You will have to make offerings and the Harvest Goddess is going to ask for certain items in seasons such as spring, summer and fall. So yeah, make sure you do save one of everything. Don't go crazy and just ship everything in the bin because you never know what item you're going to need. Tip number 15. Whilst you are out in the town, make sure to check trash cans. This might sound disgusting, but you can find some awesome items in the trash cans. And one good thing about Coral Island is you will not get any negative effect if you check a trash can near an NPC. If someone happens to walk by as you are searching in the trash, they will not be offended. You won't lose any friendship points or anything like that. So yeah, go crazy, search those trash cans and try and get lucky. Tip number 16, we briefly spoke about this, but you will pass out at 1 a.m. if you do not go to sleep. So make sure you do plan and get back home before 1 a.m. or you will pass out and lose money. You will get billed for passing out. And in the beginning of Coral Island, you don't want to be losing any of your money. We have spoke about a few tips to try and help you get back in time. One of those is making the speed go down to 50%, making sure your entrances and exits on the farm are clear so you can go straight to your house and upgrading your foraging skill so you can have a little bit more speed. All these things are really gonna help you get back in time. Tip number 17. If you are one of those players who love interacting with all of the NPCs, building up friendships, you know, finding love, I have a great tip here, which can build up relationships pretty fast at the start of the game. It takes a while to get used to the NPCs and find out what they love and what gifts to give them. There's oftentimes I've been giving gifts to some of the people and they hate it, and it's just a learning game. Buying coconut drinks at the beach shack are great for gifts for all the NPCs. Every NPC in the game likes coconut drinks. They don't love it, but they like it. So it's a very good item to build up relationships. And the best thing is they are super cheap. They are one of the cheapest items you can buy. And for a light gift, these are very, very, very good to build up hearts with a lot of the villagers. I found myself buying loads of these and just spamming all the NPCs with them. They love them. They absolutely love them. They must be fed up of me by now and they probably don't want to drink a coconut drink ever again. But you know what? It's really helping me build up friendship and trust pretty fast as well. Tip number 18, speaking about something else that you can buy and this is coffee. Raj has a little coffee corner and he will sell coffee. They will cost 100 gold per one. But these are not only good for energy, but they will give you a good speed boost, which helps you get around town much more faster. I find that in Coral Island, you know, the town and the map is quite big and it does take a long time to get around. That's not a bad thing. I do like how big it is. It's amazing for when you're exploring and foraging. But there are times where, you know, you've got quite a lot to do in one day and you do need to, you know, have a little bit of speed value. So coffee is a great little early speed boost in the game. Quite cheap as well. This is going to save you lots of time. Tip number 19, I also briefly mentioned this, but now we are going on to it in more detail. And this is Ben's Caravan. This is almost like, you know, the travel lady or a traveling merchant. Ben's Caravan, he will offer you rare goods on the weekends. There's lots of cool items you can buy here. And here you can buy your first energy item. This is basically an item that you can buy. And when you eat it, it will give you a permanent energy boost. 
similar to star drops and yeah you can find your first one there it's quite pricey but at least you know you can save up for it and the final tip that i have and this is also a very awesome tip. On the topic of all of the NPCs, you can use the festival days to meet all of the strangers and the NPCs that you have yet to meet. There are quite a lot to introduce and you know, casually playing, you may not bump into a lot of them. Well, if you go to a festival, every single NPC will be there and when you speak to them for the first time, this will act as your first introduction. So you can clear the strangers, you know, the question marks on the map and the quest as well. Whilst you are at the festival, you can open up the map you will be able to see the ones you have not met yet they will have a question mark that says strangers just walk up to them talk to them and eventually you can you know meet everybody all in one place this is going to be super handy for you know finding out who these people are you can go into your social tab find out you know their gifts what they look like a little bit more information about them and another cool thing is when you build up friendship with NPCs, they will unlock special outfits for different seasons and also face expressions. So yeah, building up the friendship is quite important in this game and pretty awesome. Festival days, yeah, use them to socialize. That's what they are all about. But there we go, guys. That is 20 useful tips for beginners in Coral Island. These are going to help you out massively, especially if you are a new player. And like I said, these are just my tips that I have found myself that are really handy and I seem to do all of these now every time I play a new game. I wish I knew these when I first started playing. If there's some more useful tips that I have not mentioned in this video, please put them down below in the comments. I would love to find out some more useful tips and of course let everybody else know as well. Coral Island is still quite new and fresh and of course it is early access so things are going to change. So yeah, we're going to find a lot of more useful tips as we keep playing. These are just the ones I've discovered as of now. If you enjoyed it and found this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe if you do want to see lots of more Coral Island content along with games similar to it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. Take it easy guys. I'll see you all on the next one. Stay cozy.